and it's just basketball. At the end of the day, it's just basketball. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe on the way in the door, my people. I hope you all are having a truly, truly fantastic day today. Uh, you see the title of the video. I tell you what, it's been really nice seeing more and more interviews from the players from the old school and them giving their opinions about the current state of the NBA. And so I was checking out uh, all the Smoke podcasts and they had uh, Mr. UTEP Two-Step on there, Tim Hardaway, uh, talking about various topics. But one of the topics that they did cover is uh, what the, the old school versus the new school and, and what he thought about it. And before we get started, uh, appreciate everyone who participated in the poll that I put up. Uh, and that is whose crossover would you rather have uh, Allen Iverson's or Tim Hardaway's now Allen Iverson won with 64% of the vote uh, but I must say me myself personally I'm taking Tim Hardaway's uh, I've done videos on Allen Iverson before and how honestly and don't get me wrong because I am an Allen Iverson fan but I honestly believe that AI was kind of the beginning of of part of this entitlement era uh, and he was also kind of the beginning of some of these rules being called a lot more lax even though I will have to say um, you know uh, they called um, carrying on Allen Iverson quite a bit you know they, they let it go quite a bit but they also called it quite a bit so it's still unlike today but that crossover he bought into the league was kind of the beginning of them changing, I guess, the perception of what was a carry. And even though what they do today is still just on a completely different level than what Allen Iverson do was doing. Uh, you know, these players are <laughs> putting their hand completely under the ball, holding the ball in the air for a few seconds. But uh, I thought uh, Tim Hardaway's crossover was much more efficient and uh, uh, yeah, it, it was just much more efficient and, and much more to the point. And I would say just as a, effective, uh, maybe more effective, uh, because oftentimes you would see AI, uh, he, he would try it and then sometimes he would have to reset and try it again. But, but Tim Hardaway's. It seemed like once once he hit you with that crow, crossover, it, it was just a wrap for you. Uh, like I said, it was quick and to the point. Uh, but anyway, thank you all who, who voted on that poll. And uh, without further ado, let's get into Tim Hardaway on the uh, All the Smoke podcast with Mark, uh, Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson. Little no bit. question. I got a question, though, because you were someone who had your career and then went into coaching and you kind of obviously every generation, the area ever is different. What is the difference between the players today and, and maybe the players, how they were when y'all played and then kind of towards the end of your career when we were coming in? We had basketball IQ. Mm. We understood basketball. We paid attention to details. We wanted it. We understood what it took to win. Uh, we put in the work to win. It wasn't fake work. Some guys out there fake working because they got to be out there. And the camera on them. And the camera on them. You know, uh, they, you, you, could, you could really look in their face and see if they want to be out there. You know, like we wanted to be out there. When we came out there, we had a face on, mm -hmm. on our face like, yeah, it's, it's going it's, yeah, it's to be on. Mm -hmm. Right here, when we come out, y'all, people come out to shoot. And when they times to shoot, yeah, we we not hugging a baby. Yeah. We not kissing this person. We not doing this. We not doing that. We come now here and we shooting a basketball. We Our mind is ready to play the game of basketball. We have a job to do. Mm -hmm. You know, this ain't fun time. Mm-hmm. This is basketball time. This is our job. This is our work. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what it was about. Today, ah, oh, it's about, hey, you know, kissing babies here. Like, you want to be the president. Doing your TikTok in the yeah, locker room TikTok, for the game. You know, and Give all, me my money. Right, all that right, dumb right. ass shit. Like, 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 like Chauncey Billups said. He said, somebody at halftime, he, he ran in there and looking at it and posted his stuff at halftime. Posted a dunk. Yeah, posted a dunk. Chauncey said, what are you doing, man? 
your mind's supposed to be in the game. They your was getting blown out too. Right. See what I'm saying? <laughs> but see what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, but you know, that, I would have cut, right right, yeah, yeah, cut him yeah, right there. Right? Yeah, yeah, I would have said you got to stay. If you want to be back here, you stay back here. You can't even mm. come out to the mm. bench. You know that that's that's what that's what t today's game is. But when we played, we we had. We had an attitude. Mm -hmm. It we, meant something. And you could be you could be cool just after the game. Right. After the game. Not All right. So we're going to hold up the clip there. Uh, Tim Hardaway said so many great things. But the first thing he talked about was the basketball IQ. Uh, you know, one of the things that really, truly, truly drives me crazy <laughs> about today's modern NBA is they man the the way uh uh you know I'm, I'm always trying to make the right play the way that phrase gets thrown around it it just has no meaning matter of fact i would say that about a lot of things that today's players say is like they say it so much that the words have no meaning uh, all this talk about basketball iq and always making the right play uh, it has no meaning. Uh, all these players uh, showing this fake confidence, it has no meaning because, again, at the end of the day, uh, it's not what you say, it is what you do. And I think, first of all, just the way the game is played today in general, uh, you can tell that this is not high IQ basketball being played. Uh, no, just by the simple fact that really every single team plays the same. Every single team plays the same. Every player almost plays the same. And again, to, to me, this is what we're talking about. This is what we talk about a lot when we talk about uh, how to, to today's NBA, every game looks the same. But when you go back to the early 2000s, when you go back to the 90s, the 80s, uh, the 70s, you know, teams had an identity. You know, they, they, they were very different, you know, uh, styles between each team and the way they played. Even if you're talking about, you know, yeah, there were some running gun teams, but there were some uh, inside out teams, you know, teams who played from the post first. But even within that, you know, there was still a difference between how teams chose to execute their offense. And that in itself was a beautiful thing to watch. It kept the game interesting. It, it made you have to be more strategic as a coach because uh, you couldn't really plan for every today's NBA is really just they just it's all about matchups. This is kind of what they base everything around is is match matchups and who's going to match up with who. But again, it, it's not really based on serious offensive strategies uh, from a coaching standpoint and from a player standpoint. Like I said, nobody has their identity. The, the thing was uh, about putting up that uh, post between Tim Hardaway and Allen Iverson was that, you know, here's two guys that had a totally two different styles of playing, uh, who had two totally different styles of a crossover, you know. But this, this was standard back in the day. It's like players... Um, had much more creativity and found uh, their own way to do what was best for them. Uh, today's uh, NBA is cookie cutter. It's like everybody learned to dribble out of the same book. Everybody learned to shoot out of the same book, you know. And and so it's it's again it's it's so sterile to watch. So yeah, you know the the whole basketball IQ thing. Like I said, it's one of those things about today's game that truly drives me crazy when this word gets thrown around when you can clearly see. And again, I don't even like to use the word basketball IQ. To me, IQ equates to how good are your basketball instincts on offense and defense. To me, it's an instinctual thing that you learn from practice, that you learn from, from studying the game, that you learn from studying past players Anthony Edwards. Uh, that's kind of why I chose him to, <laughs> to to put on the cover of this. Because to me, he represents one of these guys who just doesn't know anything about the history of the game. And so he, do he doesn't really know uh, how good or bad he really is. 
because he doesn't know about the history of the game. You know, to think that Michael Jordan was the only skilled player from his era is completely ridiculous. And so it's like, to me, if you don't know what has really been done in the past, you really can't gauge where you are. It's like, you, you may think you're doing something new and fancy, but you're really not. And that's the thing with all these players. It's like, they're just doing a bunch of flashy stuff, but the substance of the game is missing and to me that's another thing when we talk about basketball IQ with the fundamentals of the game being gone uh, with those fundamentals is a lot of basketball IQ on just basic things about the game that every player should know that can help you win again I've said this before that Michael Jordan's game if you take away the dunks and the and the flashy layups it was all fundamentals like Michael Jordan wasn't doing fancy dribbling or you know all this other stuff. You know it. Yeah, yeah. He 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 had uh, extraordinary hops. And so when it came to dunks and that stuff, yeah, that was flashy. He had the the hang time. So when it came to the layups and stuff, that was flashy. But everything else about Michael Jordan's game, offensively and defense, was based on the fundamentals. This is why. Uh, he was so extraordinary. But yeah, to me, the fundamentals is part of having good basketball IQ, which we know is severely lacking in today's game. So I think Tim Hardaway hit it, the nail right on the head, starting with that. Uh, now, something else he said uh, that I know you fanboys aren't going to like and aren't going to agree with, but he said today's players put in fake work for the camera, and I can think of no one greater to represent what he was talking about than LeBron James. Because to me, everything LeBron James does is for the camera. You know, the, the self-praise after, you know, they could be losing and LeBron James get one dunk and he's yelling like, He's done something like the, his need for constant self praise. Uh, to me, a lot of it is for the camera. It's for the, you know, look at me aspect of, of it. Um, and it. And even, you know, like I said, I'm watching that documentary about LeBron James is, uh takes us inside the Lakers practice in quotations marks. Uh, but, it, you know, the title of the video or something says Coach LeBron. And, and LeBron James is directing the team more than Darvin Ham. But all that stuff to me is just for show. It's like, I don't need to see you doing this. Like, I can see the results on the court. The results on the court tell me that you don't practice that hard. <laughs> it's really that simple. So, yeah, Tim Hardaway said these players put in fake work. And, you know, he... Uh, basically talked about these players doing everything to keep up their brand, which kind of goes along with what I always say is that these players are like politicians today. The The modern NBA players are, are like politicians. It's like it's nothing genuine about them. You know, everything is for the camera. Everything is for social media. Everything is is for the brand. And it's not about the serious seriousness of the game, which is another point um, that Tim Hardaway brought up. It was like, we came to do a job. We came to do a job. Like, pretty much saying, like, when we was out there, th this was serious business. We came to do a job. And this is another thing that is sorely lacking from the modern NBA. Uh, and this is something that, you know, the younger generation, uh, unfortunately, a lot of you guys, unless you have watched a whole lot of old school basketball, game after game, you know, you may not really understand that sentiment about how much more serious the game used to be. But I've said this before, like, to me, these players don't really want to play basketball. Like, the focus is not basketball. Again, when you have to, you know, uh, praise yourself after every bucket, that is taking your mind away from the game, if only for a split second or two. You know, that is taking your mind away from the game. Like, why do you feel the need to pat yourself on the back just because you do something that supposedly you do uh, for a living? Like, I... I 
I've said this before. You know, look at Michael Jordan, how he celebrated in the second three-peat versus the first three-peat. And I'm talking about game winners. You know, Michael Jordan, nobody back then was celebrating every single shot they hit. You know, but game winners. If you just look at how Michael Jordan celebrated game winners in the second three-peat versus the first three-peat, you could tell by the second three-peat, Michael Jordan was just so comfortable with hitting that shot, it wasn't a big deal to him anymore. Like, it's like, this is the job. The job is to win. How, however, we have to do that. And it, it doesn't require a big celebration. It's like, once the job is done, I can relax because that is the job. It's about winning. But today's players, it's like, they, they don't have that serious. It's like, the game is not really about winning anymore. It's like, these players want to win, but it is not because they're competitive. It is because, it's, it is because of public perception. <laughs> <laughs> about their legacy this is this is the only thing to me that is driving these players to want to win it's not really their competitive nature that that has to win you know it is more about what people will say if i keep losing to me this is what drives the current the the modern nba players um Oh, yeah. So he, he mentioned uh, Chauncey Billups saying that and he didn't mention what player it was. So if so if anybody knows the story or knows what player he's talking about, uh, please drop it in the comments. I would love to know. Uh, but he mentioned Chauncey Billups uh, telling him about a player who went to the locker room to post a dunk that he made on social media and, and they were getting blown out. <laughs> This is what's happening in the modern generation. So, so desperate for attention and some kind of validation that in a loss, you get a dunk and you you go back to the locker room to, to post it on social media. Man, what, what are we doing? What in the world are we doing? But again, to me, this just, this just goes back to, like I said, all of these things show that your mind is not on the game. You you can say whatever you want. You can make it whatever kind of excuse you want to make. Uh, a lot of people, and I hate it when uh, people who my age and older, people who should should know better, say stuff like, "Oh, well, you know, it's just a different time." Well, just because it's a different time doesn't make it right. Just because it's, it's a different time doesn't mean that it should be accepted. As time goes on, some things change for the better. Some things change for the worse. And if people are getting it, there is no job <laughs> that you should have to where you're not taking that job seriously. But especially when you are making millions to do said job like that, there should never come a day where just because players stop taking the game serious that we just accept it because, hey, that's that's just what it is today. <laughs> that's that's just what, what, what do you want us to do? Uh, so yeah, like I said, to me that's just an, another sign, um, an instance of showing where these players' mindsets are. At. Um, Anthony Edwards, I, I'm a sidetrack. Hopefully this will be a short video. I'm gonna wrap this up quick soon. But Anthony Edwards, I, I must say, um, last year's playoff started, and I was excited by. Anthony Edwards. Matter of fact, I would say overly excited. Uh, but the the longer I watch Anthony Edwards and, and more about what he says than what he's doing, I'm starting to understand that do I believe Anthony Edwards uh, may, may be more of a competitor than a lot of players today? Yeah, maybe. But I'm also seeing that he's definitely just like the rest of these players who wants who's seeking attention. Because every since he got that little bit of attention from uh, having some accountability in the playoffs for saying, "Hey, yeah, yeah, it was my fault," and and we saw him, you know, holding some teammates accountable and whatnot. Ever since he got the attention from doing that, it seems like he's just been saying stuff to get attention. Like saying stuff, putting his foot in his mouth, and uh, 
One thing that he said, to, and to me this goes back to what Tim Hardaway was saying about fake work. Uh, now it's not, not exactly the same, but to me it falls kind of under that same umbrella. And I'll explain it. Uh, when Anthony Edwards, when they got knocked out of the playoffs and Anthony Edwards was in the press conference, uh, one thing that he said <laughs> that severely disappointed me is he said something to the effect that they, they didn't train like they would be going that deep into the playoffs. So next season, they'll be training as if they're going deep into the playoffs. And I was thinking to myself, who does that? Like, as a competitor, uh... <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, that, that just blows my mind. I, I'm not even sure what to say about that, except for uh, can you imagine Michael Jordan <laughs> uh, after a loss saying, well, you know, well, you know, uh, uh, I really didn't train train as if I was going to go that deep in the playoffs. It, it, no, it's like you train hard, period. I mean, it's, it's that simple. If you're a competitor, you are supposed to be always training to win. You're supposed to be always training with the expectation of winning and with the expectation of being able to uh, play at your best for as long as it takes to get the job done. I mean, that's almost like saying, oh, well, you know, th this season, I I've only been training my body to, to you know, have stamina for three quarters. But uh, I think I learned my lesson. So, you know, next season, I'm, I'll, I'll be a prepared to to play all four quarters you know I, i'll have enough stamina you know I'll, I'll run an extra few laps so that i can make sure i, I can play all four quarters i mean it, what if someone was coming out the <laughs> coming off the bench with that kind of mentality it's like how are you gonna ever get off the bench if you're not even training like you want to be off the bench but anyway like i said to me it kind of goes back into this fake work in the sense that it's like you're just not taking the game that serious. You, and, and again, you, there is nothing anyone can tell me to, to make this okay. There is no kind of excuse that you can say to make this okay. It's, you're just not taking the game that serious. It's like, oh, well, you know, we weren't expecting to get to the conference finals this this season, so... You know, we, we had only trained to get past the first round, uh, but now that we know uh, we have what it takes to get to the conference finals, uh, next year we'll train uh, well enough so that we can win the conference finals and, and you know, uh, hopefully we get to the finals. And then if we get to the finals, then we'll know better for the next season that we should train hard enough to go all the way through the finals. I, I mean... Okay, <laughs> it is time to wrap this video up. But yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. What did you think of Tim Hardaway and, and what he had to say about the current generation? Do you think he was on the money? Um, or do you think he was being hard on this current generation? Do you think uh, he should just accept that, hey, this is just this is just the modern era. This is just what it is, and we should uh, not hold these kids accountable because this is just what the, how they decided they wanted to play the game with no integrity. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. You all have a truly, truly fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. All right.